Ladies and gentlemen, let me start by thanking the Jeff Council for inviting me to join you today. And let me thank you for 25 years of enabling action that safeguards the environment and empowers countries to meet the climate change challenge. As you celebrate your 25th anniversary, may I honor you for everything you have accomplished. You have invested billions of dollars in the vibrant forests, well-managed lands, and healthy water systems that support all life on Earth and underpin our human economy. This investment benefits not just the 67 countries you are almost 4,000 projects are in, but every country that shares our common oceans and atmosphere. These global commons must be safeguarded for future generations. And last year's Paris Agreement proves that nations can agree a political framework to protect our common natural capital. In addition to the recognition for 25 years of your role as the financial mechanism for the Rio Conventions, let me commend you for your work in support of governments negotiating the Paris Agreement. In a world where environment and economy must move forward together to open opportunity for all, Paris proves, with support from the Jeff, from non-party stakeholders and from civil society, that the world can come together and agree a transformative vision for growth. I therefore look forward to what the Jeff will accomplish moving forward, not just in support of implementing the Paris Agreement, but supportive action under all the conventions towards a common goal. Paris is a wake-up call that what we accomplish on climate and environmental issues over the next five years will likely determine the long-term fate of humanity on this planet. With the Paris Agreement alongside a set of aspirational sustainable development goals, we can realize an environmentally responsible model of growth that meets our development needs, precisely because our population is projected to swell from 7 to 9 billion people or more. Paris was a turning point, and the next five years will determine if we truly are able to steer the ship in a new direction towards a healthy economy underpinned by healthy global commons over the next decades and beyond. From a climate change perspective, we know what this new direction will look like. We must bend the emissions curve as quickly as possible and drive emissions down with an aim of lit limiting temperature rise to well below 2 degrees Celsius, or better still, 1.5 degrees. If we can do this, we can eventually arrive at the destination of climate neutrality, the point where our greenhouse gas emissions are in balance with the planet's ability to absorb those emissions. This is the long-term goal of the Paris Agreement, and a goal that will serve our sister conventions by reducing land degradation and improving the outlook for biodiversity. As an operating entity of the agreement, this long-term goal should guide your work. And I look forward to the next five years because you have already embraced this goal. Your work on mitigation fosters enabling conditions to mainstream mitigation into sustainable development. And it also fosters the enabling conditions that will make national climate action plans a success. And we have. 190 national action plans as part of the Paris Agreement. Your work on adaptation, particularly through the Special Climate Change Fund and the Least Developed Country Fund, improves the lives of millions, and it creates a portfolio of projects that provide practical knowledge for increasing resilience. And adaptation is now elevated with its own goal in the Paris Agreement. Your work on the new Capacity Building Initiative for Transparency is a crucial component of the new Universal Agreement that helps all countries transparently report their progress to ensure we are on course to meet our collective global goals. So, on your anniversary, let us celebrate what you have done. Yes, but let us also celebrate what it means moving forward. An integrated approach to protecting our global commons can mobilize aspiration into action. You have proven that. Let me ask two things of you that will serve as further proof of what is possible using Paris as an anchor. First, 
May I ask that you work with the Green Climate Fund and other stakeholders, in particular in finance, technology, and capacity building, to ensure the highest levels of complementarity among all operating entities. Making the Paris Agreement a success can mobilize support for other crucial action that safeguards our shared planet. Second, may I ask that you pursue replenishment with our mandates from Paris positioned for success. I understand that you seek to integrate action by looking at linkages between the conventions. I ask that you view these linkages now through the lens of the Paris Agreement, both in terms of the policies that countries must put in place and in the cooperative process that produced the agreement in Paris. We must point all growth, all investment and all policy at making Paris a success. And we must seek to replicate this success across all the conventions, as the planet's air and water, flora and fauna, do not heed the human delineations of those treaties. With the GEF continuing to forge partnerships, continuing to enable action, and continuing to put people at the center of development, we can safeguard our common home and deliver a climate safe and sustainable future to our children and their children and to every living being on the planet. As this is the last time I will address you as Executive Secretary of the Climate Change Convention, let me end with a heartfelt and personal thank you to Naoko Ishii and all the Council members for your collaboration and cooperation with the Climate Change Secretariat throughout my entire period here. I trust the spirit of goodwill that has enabled so much action already and a strong agreement in Paris will carry us far into the future together. Many thanks.